<laughs> Hi. <laughs> hey, yo, bitch. <laughs> she completely funny. ignores every single one of you and continues along her way, touching every brick on the wall until finally she reaches the end of one of the corners and turns around and goes, Oh, you brought friends. <laughs> yes. Um, this little guy over here is Urbag. Urbag. Whoops. Sorry. Just, just uh, learning their names. Um, <laughs> this uh, guy over here is, you know, the, the mad one. Uh, this, this really big mad one all the time. He's a uh, Kungar. Ah, don't, they <laughs> got it. Yet. Don't, don't mind him. Just anything he says. Um, <laughs> and this, uh, the remainder is Glocken. He's, uh, you know, just don't trust him. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, Omira uh, sort of looks over at you, cocks ahead, and says, Can you hear them? Oh, of course I can. Not, not them. Here. Not them. The wall. No weirdo. Uh, I mean, I did hear some counting and some singing, but I presume that was you. Come, come, Malgrenor. Sit, sit, sit. And she motions you over towards the wall. Okay, I'll go to the wall. Listen, she says, and sort of pushes your head into the wall and so that you have an ear against the wall. She says, can you hear them? Not really. Stay here and stay here until you can hear them, and then you will have know what it is to be a brick. <laughs> <laughs> she. Uh, I mean, I guess I'm staying. <laughs> she's worse than Kugar's mentor. I'm out. I just... And then. Uh, Okay. Valor squawks, and then uh, Olmira sort of looks over to Valor and goes, Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't tell me that uh, Mayor Uptal had chosen you to be on the Everflame quest. The fucking bird said that? Yeah, she can speak to the bird. I mean, I'm, I'm concentrating on the wall. <laughs> I mean, you guys got to answer that. Yeah, she's talking to the bird. I'm going to see how the bird's going to get with this. Okay. Realistically speaking, one of you has to answer a question. Okay, damn it. Fuck. No, fine. No, no. The bird wait, has got was... this. Wait, what was the question? Okay. What other food have you got? Nothing. Uh, Can we repeat the question? So, it wasn't so much of a question as a statement, but uh, Omira oh, sort of looked over towards everyone and said, Oh, you didn't tell me that uh, Mayor Uptal had told you about the Everflame quest. Thanks. Yeah, we're on a quest. Mm. Ah, the Everflame. It's so beautiful. Have you ever come towards the tower in the center of this town and just looked at the Everflame? No. Yeah, once when I was drunk. It's so beautiful. It's like music. Okay. I no, know. yes. Yes, it is quite lovely when you're sober, Gungar. <laughs> she sort of just awkwardly looks sort of through you, even as if not looking towards you. Sort of, it's almost she's like reminiscing or caught in a daydream, and sort of just ignores what you guys are saying, uh, despite her sort of talking to you earlier. Is she blind? She's just ditzy. Okay. Um. So I, I say, ah, I hear it now. Ah, excellent, excellent, excellent. She says, sort of skipping around in a small circle. And pulls you around and gives you sort of a hug while lifting one leg. Uh, and then she sort of does a little twirl and lifts you up into the air. And sort of has lift both her leg. hands, yes, lifts you. Three pounds. And sort of holds her arms out as if she's striking a ballet pose. And says, oh, what it would be to leave this town and learn so much. But I have so much more to learn here. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> Upon you asking this, Omira looks at you 
and her, her eyes sharpen. She looks super serious, and she says, I've only counted the first hundred thousand grains of sand along this side of the bank of this bank of the river. I haven't even gotten well, to I the other side. Four million. So we're good. good. Tree song. Uh, upon yeah, you, bad. upon you saying that you've counted the next four million, Tree song runs over to you and sort of does sort of a leaping hug tackle uh, to you, uh, Glocka, and sort of drags you down to the ground until you're sitting straight in front of her. And says, "Tell me, what did you learn?" Um, I had to waste a lot of time. I, I learned that one million grains of sand weighs about the same as two million half grains of sand. So I used that <laughs> to assume my counting. Upon you talking to her, you, you see Omira sort of with wide eyes, just listening onto your every word, just nodding intently, sort of beckoning you, beckoning you to go on. <laughs> She needs to rub it all so the genie can come out. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to continue with this. Like, Improv, friend. And then I say that four grains of sand were the same as three grains of sand if you were to add another grain of sand to the pot of three. <laughs> Tree Song sort of looks at you and sort of thinks about this, what you just said for a second, says, Hmm, but what if we added one grain of sand to three grains of sand? And with this, she sort of stands up and walks away from you, from you, Glocken, and sort of just ponders harder and harder and harder. And you can almost hear the gears turning in her head before she says, Oh, oh. And turns back to uh, your party overall and says, That reminds me, did you guys talk to Mayor Uptall? Yes, yes, yeah, we did. We did. So, are you guys going on the quest for the Everflame? Sure. Yes. Yeah, I guess we have to. She sort of giggles to herself and says, Oh, but wait. What about Mayor Uptall? Have you re remembered to talk to him yet? I mean, we kind of talked to him in the beginning. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, she says. As she sort of ponders and strokes her uh, blonde hair, sort of grabbing each through each brush a random twig or some leaf out of it, and says, Huh. Well then, remember, everything that you see is living. Unless it's not. And with that, she sort of skips off and says, Ooh, that's right. And remember, every living thing is living. Unless. unless it's not. Unless it is. And with that, she skips off on her own. And the fuck is wrong with this lady? everyone seems rather confused. But Valor <laughs> sort of flies after um, her. And then suddenly... You hear a sort of skittering, and old Mira Treesong is at the top of the wall. And you sort of hear the yelling of a very annoyed guard at the bottom of the wall saying, Hey, what are you doing up there? Get down! But she's sort of not uh, paying attention to the guard at all. And she, says she sort of has her arms out like, you know, like sort of a statue of Christ almost, or Titanic, and she has... Valor perched up on her head, and she's just sort of looking up at the sky. Well, isn't this a storybook moment? And your party this, continues this to stare at her. Uh, she is not falling. She's continuing to just stare up there. And upon you thinking that, all of a sudden she starts to sort of teeter forward and starts to sort of fall straight, sort of dead plank, almost like somebody's, like going off of a diving board, except they're sort of just tilting forward until they're falling. Is the bird still on her head? The bird, uh, Valor has flown off her head upon her falling. Oh, okay. He's falling off the wall? Off the wall. Uh, I need run to catch over. Her. I run over I to try to catch her. I attempt to catch her. Oh, I'm uh, do that. Both I of you, okay. you no need to roll for... No, no need to roll for this. Uh, Glocken, 
Uh, you and uh, Malgrinor both throw and run over, and you sort of uh, both catch her. Uh, Malgrinor, you end up with her upper body. Uh, Glocken, you end up with her lower body. And with that, she That's sort of. Fetish. And with that, she sort of <laughs> giggles and says. And with that, she sort of giggles and says, "Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you." Now. You're welcome. It's very important that when you go on the quest for the Everflame, that you keep your eyes, and your ears, and your feet open, because things will not always be as they seem. So please, go. And with that, she sort of twirls out of your arms, gives every single one of you a hug, and gives uh, Malgonor an extra big hug, and says, bye, Valor, and then uh, Rock. goes off uh, <laughs> past the walls, and with a guard sort of still shaking his spear at her, rather annoyed. Uh, upon uh, Finger. upon uh, Tree Song leaving you, um, Valor seems much happier uh, than before, uh, sort of like he's had a talk with an, uh, with like an old friend or someone who he really likes. And the sun is starting to set. Uh, it's, um, you guys are starting to, as a group, get quite hungry. And you guys should be looking to see if you can't tuck in for the night. Or at least head over to find some food. We should go to room 12. We should go over to that I'm river gonna... and try and get some fish. Or we could just go to the bar I, I'm and tired. buy some food. Why would I go fishing? <laughs> Because we're hungry. We've been talking to psychopathic people. <laughs> okay, I say we go fishing. Okay, I say we go fishing. Do it, do it. Who, is, who, does anyone have a uh, local knowledge? Does anyone have a fishing pole? Can we can you... go to the fucking bar. Oh, uh, I mean, does, does the bar have food? Can, yeah, yeah, can you roll for local yeah. knowledge? <laughs> so the bar has food. food. We, we've lived here, Justin. We know where they have food. Ah. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> like, right. like, I've you used my knowledge of history your whole to know life. this. This town <laughs> has <laughs> this story. <laughs> Historically, you know that the uh, main place where people get food from is from their own houses. They sort of you know, small right, small so village people go, but you know also that uh, whenever people go out to eat, without a doubt, they always head over to the Seven Silvers, which is not only sort of the um, bar, but it's also, you know, the hub for any sort of activity whatsoever. But he also did say there's food in other people's houses. Okay. That's free. I head over to the Seven Silvers. Non-idiots are allowed to follow. Remember, you oh, guys are expected to stay together. I'll come. Okay, so then everyone can follow. Alright, fine, I'm fine, we're going to the bar. Yeah. I don't think we yeah. have two other solid options. Uh, upon entering the bar, you see that it's much more filled uh, than before. Uh, now that it's around mealtime, and you see that uh, uh, poor um, Asina is sort of working her ass off as she goes from table to table to the back room, back to a table, back to the back room, back to the bar, back to the table, uh, sort of getting dishes after dishes to uh, people who are eating there. Uh, meanwhile, Trilvoir Silvers uh, is sort of passed out on the bar top um, with a, gr a drink in his hand. Do we see it ourselves? I look around the room, check, check the, the male to female, female Rocio. Rocio. Uh, Rocio. Rocio. Shut up. <laughs> it's it's pretty close to 50-50, but most of the uh, women are either with their families or with their significant other. Okay, so we're not getting D-bag laid. <laughs> Damn not it. Much, not willfully. I hate <laughs> hanging out with you guys. <laughs> you are literally... My least favorite people in town. I, <laughs> I resist. I, I attempt to catch him before he hits the ground. Upon hearing the scuffling, <laughs> at, <laughs> upon hearing the scuffling at the front of the uh, establishment, uh, Asina sort of sees that you guys are sort of standing awkwardly around, and quickly 
uh, finishes delivering a tray of uh, bread and soup over to one of the uh, patrons and rushes over to you guys and says, Oh, so sorry, so sorry. I didn't, uh, I didn't see you. I'm so sorry. Go ahead and come over, come over, come over. And she sort of beckons you forward and brings up an empty table for you guys. I seat myself at said table. I push I'll, I'll... Garbag's chair out while he tries to sit down. I haven't uh, tried to sit down yet, Dick. He hasn't. I know, I'm in preparation to do it. Damn it. Oh. I, I I separate Urbag and Kungar. <laughs> opposite I, side I, of the I, table. I playfully punch Kungar in the face with all my might. <laughs> <laughs> I headbutt his fist. Now, 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 boys. Play nice. I'll have none of that here. I'll have none of that here. Otherwise, my pa won't let me take over he thinks that i every time i look over the uh seven silvers there's a bound to be a fight to break out so please 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 so wait who won his fist or my head uh it's a tie we'll say unstoppable <laughs> force me to move <laughs> object with that right. she says so what do you, what do you boys want uh, do you have any specials today? Uh, the soup is quite nice. I made it myself, she says, and she does sort of a what little twirl and curtsy. And she says, well, it's a little bit of deer, a little bit of fish. I made it myself. People seem to like it. Can I have the shrimp scampi, please? She says, I'm sorry. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I want a large plate of mutton. She says, right on up. What about the rest of you? Uh, do you have truffles? <laughs> I do not. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'll take, uh, I'll take some soup. And, I will uh, also take some soup. And, uh, do you have, uh, anything special for Valor here? Oh, of course. Yeah. Don't worry about Valor. All right. The, the bird ordered before me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll have the mutton too alright and with this she uh, starts to leave but before leaving turns around and sort of looks around and leans over to you guys and says so is it true you guys are the ones who are going to go get the ever flame yeah. I knew it 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 and then she says for the questions for the ever flame of course, she says, and sort of gives you all a wink and uh, skips over uh, towards the back, but not before sort of whispering to another two other girls uh, on her way. Are these girls over the age of 13? They are. <laughs> are they with their significant others or families? They are. You know them to be uh, housewives. Oh, swag. Okay, are they so shitty on. housewives? So, so it's nice. So, uh, you know, we're all sitting at the table, and uh, mm -hmm. I tell Gungar to get his elbows off. I move them farther onto the table. <laughs> now my armpits are on the table. At this point, everyone, please roll a perception check. <laughs> oh, God, we're about to get shot. Is that D20? Oh, D20. Uh, eight, and then, let's see, where is that? Okay, I rolled a 12. Six plus. Plus your wisdom bonus. 13. I got 13. Okay. I got 14. And got 13. 13? So, 13, 14, 13, and... How did I Nick get a 13? Oh, I got a 12. But how did Nick get a 13? He doesn't I have a plus 4. Bonus. Oh, you have a plus 4? Yeah. On my perception, what? yeah. On the skill sheet. Your oh, wisdom no, isn't negative? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, wait. I have a plus yeah. 2. I only have 11. Okay. I looked at the wrong number. So, with those numbers, uh, you guys uh, suddenly hear, uh, sort of in the mutter of the crowd, uh, you know, the conversations going on, you sort of notice over in a table, uh, not too far away from you guys, uh, sort of 
odd looking uh, human who's got a large scar sort of on half of his uh, face uh, pass from sort of to the right of one eye going all the way down uh, pass towards his jawbone towards like the bottom of his side also branching out towards the upper one part of his mouth and you sort of see a hood uh, over him and he's talking actually to the uh, captain of the guard, uh, Gregor Wislow. Uh, you've never really um, seen the scarred man, um, uh, except for one of you, uh, and that would be uh, um, Urbag, who you've seen him uh, visit the temple once in the past, uh, but that was about a month ago. He, um, I read the wrong side of my dice. <laughs> Did you really? Uh, please. No, no one had like anything big at all. Uh, if you had a there's fifteen, a... did you have a fifteen? I don't know. No, so let me check my there... dice. No, there's a nine, a six, and that's a eight. nine. I don't know which side's up. The top. Okay. We'll go from top down view. This one right here. Ever move your head? Wait, which one? This is a nine. This is a nine. Okay. Yep. Wait. Correct. All right. So um. Yeah, you, you hear these two sort of talking to each other under whispered tones, and you hear what you think might be the word Everflame, but you're not sure. Uh, this is for the people who rolled uh, 13, was it? Was that the highest number? 14. 14? 14. 14. Okay, so, Stephen, uh, I'm sorry, uh, not Stephen, uh, what is it? Um, Glocken, you think you can hear the word Everflame being mentioned. The rest of you don't notice that, and they only notice uh, the got, sort of odd duo. Also. Yeah, no, I wrote a 12. Wait, so who got 14? Yeah, I, thought you got 14. I did. Oh, okay, so John's the one who who uh, sort of hears the muttered Everflame. Ever, sort of. The rest of you oh, yeah. are unaware. Does anyone hear anything? I think John. Has nope. Fuck him. <laughs> I feel like that's so meta gaming. Like. Well, you all notice this sort of odd group over there. You just can't quite make out what they're saying, except for John. What's the deal with them? Uh, I walk up to them. Be like, "What are you folks doing here?" Uh, the captain of the guard, Gregor Whistler, looks up to you and says, "Ah, if it isn't the adventurers, you guys ready for tomorrow?" Nah, bro. Not a shot. We need more stuff. Uh, you know that, um, the, uh, captain of the guard, uh, Gregor Wislow, is, uh, tasked with basically, uh, keeping all of, um, Kassin safe. Uh, because as you know, your country is actually technically at war with, uh, neighboring country of Molthun. Uh, but, uh, thanks to, uh, Wislow's, uh, alert, uh, and... Hey, stop that, stop that. Alert and sort of ready rigor and training. Uh, Kasten's been relatively unscathed, uh, but he is known to be quite harsh and uh, much to the displeasure of his troops. And says, well... I ask him if he has any weapons to spare. I think you don't need to worry about that. In fact, your mentor should have taken care of that. I I'm still so worried. Find a dagger on myself. <laughs> you actually do. Upon searching your body, you find a dagger, a short sword, and a heavy crossbow that you did not have at the beginning of the day, for some reason, on yourself. I check myself. Uh, Before you wreck awesome yourself. After Kungar, you have the same thing you always had, which is your standard items, including the war axe. I and the morning star? And the morning star. Okay. I check myself and I find a boner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, upon. Uh, Asina returns to your table and says, Here you boys go. And drops off sort of a large piece of mutton on a plate and another large piece of mutton on a plate, uh, as well as two soup bowls and four loaves of bread, as well as four large mugs of uh, some sort of ale-ish drink, all while sort of balancing this on one hand, you can actually see a drop of sweat sort of roll off 
uh, the side of one of, of her uh, cheek as she struggles to balance these four immense dishes uh, for you guys uh, and placing them in front of your table. Um, Glocken, yours is placed at your seat since you are not at your seat. Flag. Um, I walk back to my seat and begin to eat. All right. Uh, as you guys continue to eat, you can uh, hear uh, a little bit more clearly now uh, the conversation uh, between the captain uh, and this stranger. And it goes... Uh, now, definitely, you guys definitely all heard for sure something about the Everflame, but it's probably about you guys. John, stop that, please. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So I will get up from my table. Valor hopped onto my shoulder. Just I'm still drinking. I'm I still get another drinking. round. That's great. Um, a round of beer. Um... And I walk over to the captain. I said, uh, hey, Cap, who's your friend? This? What, you haven't heard of Saigar? Was I, was I not listening before? I probably wasn't listening. And Saigar well, sort of. Bad guy? And Saigar sort of looks over with his hood. You can't quite see his eyes. And sort of looks up at you guys and says. Nothing. Nothing at all. He just sort of looks up. I, uh, I reckon I overheard you guys talking about something, 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 Everflame, something, something. Saigar, Saigar sort of looks up even more, so you can sort of see his eyes and says, eavesdropping isn't a good habit to have. Oof. 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 Damn. Couldn't help myself. I just, you know, uh, you know, being outside all the time, you notice little things, big things. Oh, did you guys know that, uh, you know, if you're around an adventure, just, just, just make sure that everything is living, but it's not, but it's living. You and, kids uh, know shit. nothing about adventure, says Saigar. And with that, uh, the captain, guard captain sort of uh, looks over to Saigar and says, ah, that's what they're sending them off on this for, isn't it? And Saigar so sort of just does a low rumbling sort of growl almost. You're not quite sure you heard that or not. Uh, no, come whoa. again? Wait, I, I did an adventure with the best of them. What'd you say? I'm sorry? <laughs> is my mic muted? No. Yeah, okay. is your mic's on. I, yeah, my mic is on. No, okay. I said I can adventure with the best of them. I'm pretty, uh, I can adventure. And Sagar so sort of listens to you guys and says, You kids think you know adventure? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Just get the Everflame. I don't feel good about this. And with that, uh, upon Sigar saying this, though, uh, the guard captain, despite Sigar's sort of grim uh, face and look, the captain sort of just laughs and... And sort of slaps the table a little bit and says, Ah, you kids have nothing to worry about. But still, it's important that you guys remember this moment, because this is when you boys turn into men. Um, well, it's been yeah. about 46 years since yeah. that time. It really. <laughs> I mean, technically speaking, uh, you are, uh, despite your ripe old age, uh, by your racist standards, still quite adolescent. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, uh, we say peace out and we go back to our table then. <laughs> Upon returning to your table, uh, you see that the food uh, is still there, waiting to be eaten. Uh, Valor has actually pecked a bit at someone's mutton. Who's mutton? God damn it, it's probably <laughs> mine. Uh, is my... I go over and check my button. Uh, Kungar, you find your mutton untouched. Oh, I go over and check my mutton. Uh, Urbag, you see that a small strip of one of your mutton legs has mysteriously gone missing. Alright, I give him the rest of it. I'm d I am I can't eat off the same plate as an animal, I'm sorry. 
Uh, <laughs> just give Valor the rest of my food. Uh, <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, uh, Asina returns back and says, And Valor, this is for you. And lays down a piece of a nice long ear of corn, uh, as well as some uh, grains over off on the side. Oh yeah, no, that was a trade. I'm getting that corn. Yeah, I, 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 I give the corn <laughs> to Urbe. Thank you, thank you. And yeah, with that, a scene with you guys and says, "Did you just try to talk to Saigar?" Yes. Why? What do you know of him? That try guy kind of gives me the creeps. I'm not gonna lie. He's Definitely not from here. In fact, I don't think anybody knows where he's from. Yeah, he gives off that vibe. So what'd you I ask him? Went... I think he's from, like, the south. Probably. So, so what, what, what did you guys ask him? I asked him... Oh, oh I forget what I asked him. You didn't ask him anything. Oh, yeah, yeah that was I walked you. up and I was like, what are you guys doing? I was like, give me weapons. Oh, me. come on. You don't need to hide anything from a scene. Uh, and that, with that, she sort of pulls oh, over a chair herself and plops it next to your table backwards and sort of leans against your table and says, come on, spill it. What'd you ask? Yeah, no. Everybody in town comes to you for shit they need to know. That's not happening. No. That's You're not. a little gossip. And with that, uh, Asina sort of looks over to, uh, to uh, you, uh, Kungar, and sort of her eyes get really wide and a little watery and a little doe-eyed. And she sort of... I give her a hug to console her. And she and sort of leans into your her. hug and says, So, what'd you guys ask? Tell her nothing. I have drank too much and unable to speak. <laughs> that should be all the fucking time. Um, <laughs> I mean, we should. I mean, we just asked them, you know. I asked them how their day was, and they said you know it was alright. Yeah. And then I asked them how the weather was, and they said, well, if you were looking outside for yourselves, you wouldn't need to ask us, and they told us to go away. And it turns out his father is a meteorologist. Really? She says? I haven't heard that. No. No, 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 not really. Now go away, please. We're not talking about it. And she sort of leans over some more and says, Don't you think it's weird, though, that he's talking to the captain of the guard? I mean, yeah. someone has to talk to the captain of the guard. Yeah, but why do you think that is? I mean, normally, only people that he ever talks to is, like, the mayor, and it's just doesn't well, seem right. Maybe, Maybe he's on vacation. that guy and the mayor <laughs> are get, and getting it. Uh, no, I would have heard that long ago. It's definitely not them. Now, Sir Dramot, on the other hand. Mm. Oh, God, please don't. <laughs> please, she, God, I have to be able to look that guy in the eye again. She sort of... <laughs> oh, th th we're talking also about someone else. Don't worry, your guy is Braggar, not Dramot. <laughs> 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 and she, she says now so you boys ready for tomorrow yeah oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I've been I make ready a reassuring day. mumble I've been ready yeah. since Kungar's mentor <laughs> <laughs> oh you mean bragger is he in the bar uh, you, you ask, uh, do you ask, uh, Asina yeah. that? No, he doesn't really come around a lot here. I mean, he asks for, a, he buys a lot of the, a lot of our drinks, but he never really comes here. Hmm. She says, sort of just pondering and drumming her fingers on the table. She says, well then, hope you guys do okay. Thank you, and thank you for the food. I always, ah, oh, I adore free food. And more beer. And she says, more beer? What's in it for and me? I don't know, you said it's already on the house. Well, I said it's on the house, but really it's on my dad. I figure that 
If he's going to be sleeping on the job, he might as well pay for some of the food. I throw down one bronze piece. <laughs> <laughs> she grabs the bronze piece, sort of turns it around, puts it back on the table and glowers at you guys a little bit and says, Oh no, I forgot about the stove. And she sort of rushes back into the kitchen. Uh, and you sort of uh, hear sort of a lot of uh, pounding around going around inside the kitchen. Yeah. Time out. Just that's in there. What? Uh, Dad. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be right back. I'm gonna get cookies. I hate you. Bad fuck. <laughs> No. Go to bed after when I can't come back. Uh, yeah, man, I've been trying to get us there for like the past fucking half hour. <laughs> <laughs> but you keep pulling your axe out of people. And <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna be a little fucked on this adventure. No, we'll be fine. I have a cool new hairdo. We'll be fine. Oh, who's calling me? I'm back. Alright, uh, let me know when everyone is back. Justin, you here? Justin, are you muted? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and poke... Justin, uh, yeah, I know. Back and all right. What happened? Uh, we're waiting on Justin to finish IRL things. Justin back? Uh, he's probably talking to his dad right now. Oh, still all right. Fucking Kungar. That's yeah, that guy's a dick. <laughs> Kungar. Yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> like assholes. I am so hungry. IRL? Real life? Yeah. Uh, yeah, while Justin's gone, let's go ahead and all get food real quick. Yeah? Alright. Alright, so meet back in like five ish minutes, assuming Justin's not back by then. Uh, Sounds good. You, you guys are at the, uh, are eating dinner, and. Okay, yeah, I know where you guys are. So, who's here right now? I am. Alright. Can you guys hear the fan? No. Alright, word. I mean, we can hear the fan when you talk, but um, as long as you're not talking, we don't hear the fan. Really? I didn't hear it at all. 
What about now? Nope. Uh, I still haven't heard it. Word. Uh, I still think we should have fought those little kids. I mean, don't want to fight the town. I don't want to fight that little kid. He was being an asshole. He was, I mean, wasn't he? I threw yeah. a bronze piece at him. We didn't phase him. It's because he ran around the corner because he was a girl. And he had fish. <laughs> Yo, and how hot was the, the half elf's teacher? The, um. Oh, Omira Tree Song? Well, Mirror Tree Song is a solid, like, 8. No, no, I was saying that to... No, I can't. Look at... I forgot his name in the game. Who? I he can't. Glocken. Glocken, okay. Yeah, I was telling Glocken, I was asking the question, how hot was... Oh, fuck. What's Justin's name? Algernor. Algernor? Malgrenor. Okay. No, a mirror tree song is quite easy on the eyes. Sorry. All right, welcome back. We're waiting on John to uh, get his food back. Okay. Nico, you hold him. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, man, the dude's hungry. His character's gotten to eat, but he has... Actually, his character didn't really get to eat that much, either. I mean, his character's corn. three foot tall, and he got corn. He'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Valor. So, um... Glocken and, uh... Kungar were... Talking about how hot your uh, mentor was. Actually, I think Kungar was. Yeah, it was just me. <laughs> I, guess oh, me. I guess he's into the uh, oblivious crazy types. <laughs> yeah, dude, I have a wisdom of like five. So, what did you learn today about bricks? Conversations. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they sounded very solid. Oh. <laughs> Fucking old Mira. Yeah, John's back. All right, everyone's back. Uh, one second. Okay. Yeah, no heads up, guys. Um, what'd you get? All right, heads up, guys. Normally, when we have these campaigns, try to have like at least snacks or a drink off to the side. It really makes it a lot easier. Yep. And Andrew, we can take a five minute break. We just so. did. Exactly. So, we're good. Alright, so, uh, when we last left you guys, you guys were eating. Um, Wait, John's not here. And, uh... Oh my god, John. Why you do this? I, I don't know what... Oh, he forgot to close the door downstairs. And Asina, you guys had just chased her off, and she might have burnt something in the, the kitchen. Uh, since you guys were so reluctant to tell her anything. I'll wait until John yeah, until John gets back. I'll wait before I say anything more. Oh, what the fuck is he doing? Ready? 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. John's putting his headset on now. Okay. So, as you guys uh, continue um, to uh, um, eat, you notice that Saigar's and um, the guard captain's table is getting a little bit more agitated, but they're also whispering a lot softer now that they are sort of aware that you guys were listening into their conversation before. At this point, if you guys wish to do a stealth uh, check, you may go ahead and roll to do so. You don't have to, though. Uh, we got this, right? guys. <laughs> I mean, I'll do it, too. Why not? 13 plus... I rolled a 20. Non-natural. I rolled a 19. That's a 19. I, I got a 20. Non-natural. Alright, 19's not good. Both 20's passed. Two. Mine's 22. Oh, okay. So everyone passes. Whoa. Okay. So you guys are able, uh, upon hearing the table get a little bit more agitated, to sort of, sort of look. You everyone look over, right at each other, and you slowly all sort of slide over towards the table until you just get into earshot, and you hear the captain sort of whispering over to Saigar saying, "Yeah, but they haven't returned." For they're they're a week late now. What's taking them so long? Saigar whispers back over. Your men seem quite ill prepared for these kinds of, such a simple task. And uh, the guard captain goes, It should just be a simple, simple thing. If we do this every time the Everflame quest comes up, why now would they be delayed? And then Sagar merely looks over and says, You're the one who lives here, not me. I don't know. Why are you asking me these things? And the guard captain says, It's just odd is all. They've never been late to returning in the past. And with that, they both sort of fall silent and continue to eat. Hmm. I mean, I take a sip of soup. I'm fucking hungry. Yeah, I'm going to keep eating mutton. I like soup. Uh, I guess I'm the only one fucking concerned with the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> soup. Well, it's not like we can ask them about it. Oh, no, I we already tried that. Up but, to uh, them. I keep an eye on them. So who hasn't returned yet? Um, Sagar looks over at you and says, "You're quite persistent, aren't you?" Yeah. Uh, at this point, you can go ahead and roll a diplomacy check. Uh, do I have any bonuses to diplomacy? I have a one point bonus to diplomacy. Uh, well, with that natural 20. Roll a 17, so that's an 18. Um, John, you don't have to roll. You don't, you, you're, you're, you're not, not the one talking. Saigar oh. says nothing more and uh, merely calls over Asina and uh, tips her. Uh, with uh, with five silver pieces, and both the uh, captain and Saigar head out. But before leaving, the captain sort of looks over at you guys and winks and says, you guys don't worry about anything, you guys will be fine. And they leave uh, the building. Uh, meanwhile, Asina comes over to you guys. Oh, R.I.P. Earth to uh, Glocken. Yeah, I'm here. All right. No, 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 okay. Get, uh, same thing. John's going on. Yep. Give me a like, just keep going. Okay. At this point, um, Asina returns back to you guys and starts picking up your empty dishes and uh, giving you guys some more refills on your uh, drinks and says, "They're strange, aren't they?" Yeah. Really Looks strange. around. <laughs> I look around and say, "Well, aren't we all?" And she sort of looks oh offend, a little bit offended, and says, "Well, you more than me." And with that, returns back to the back side of the kitchen. Um, can I, I return yell, to her back? Side? I yell, "I don't need your childhood sass." She's a fucking child. She, she turns sass. around and sticks out her tongue at you guys, and then returns back to the kitchen, holding a load of plates that are way bigger than uh, the workload of one person. I say we call it a night. Mm -hmm. I say... Let's I, go to bed. I say... We take bets and see who gets drunk first. 
I say turn I down say for what? Go and I pop on another a molly. walk through the woods <laughs> because Andrew doesn't have anything on a walk through the woods prepared. So <laughs> it'll be really fun. <laughs> I don't think so. I'll uh, I say let's go count grains of sand. I already counted the grains of sand, bro. Oh, she's good. I told you. Did you not believe me? <laughs> you did all, all right, the math. Guys. All right, guys, let's let's call it a night. Okay, we go to room twelve. I use the key. The door opens. Inside there is one bed. I jump on it and fall asleep. Oh, who are you to say that? I'm whoa, whoa, whoa! Who's who's the DM? All right. Upon using the key, you open the door, and inside you find one bed and uh, three other cots that have been set up ahead of time. And in fact, there's actually a perch over in the corner uh, for a large bird. I I, I the bed as I'm the front person. Dibs on the perch. <laughs> <laughs> I take up two cots. After Whoa. I take off my armor. Alright, so you guys go to sleep? I mean, do we need to take off so... our armor? I mean, you, you, you guys can, um, yeah. So your group goes ahead, takes off their armor, uh, and go to sleep. So, so do we have to wait for five minutes? <laughs> no, you guys go ahead. Um... Five minutes, actually. <laughs> When we're on, when we're outside of combat, these kinds of actions, we can just assume that you guys do it. <clears throat> no, I, I want to wait five minutes. All right, so no. as real as possible. the next day opens, and you hear a knock on the door, waking your group up. I, I put up. on my clothes. You weren't wearing clothes. I've been took them off to go to bed. You mean your armor? He and my clothes. clothes. Oh, wait, no, I just wear there. metal. Yeah, that's why it smelled like fucking manure all night. <laughs> okay, I, I open the door. Uh, there you find short change. Slightly. Short change, uh, peering in, saying. Does it take me a second to find him because he's really far down. Uh, yeah, you guys, you look outside. Uh, you open the door a crack. You look out. You don't see anything. Then you look down and you see short change, sort of peering in as much as you open, and say, "You guys certainly slept in. Everyone okay and sober?" For the most part. Define okay and sober. Walk. <laughs> well, it says, it's almost noon. You guys better head out soon. Everyone's waiting. <coughs> well, I suppose we'll be on our way. Everyone have everything they need? Travel lights, everything? Yeah, uh, I need backpack. Oh, don't worry about those kinds of things. Uh, Malganor, you have already actually gotten up ahead of everyone else and was, were meditating ahead of time. Haha, uh -huh. I have spells, Cleric doesn't. Uh, has John read the Buddha? John can go ahead and do his rituals and things like that in this time span. He doesn't require as much time necessarily. Yeah, that's where I'll be. Alright. So Short Flame goes, go ahead. Short Flame says, alright. Well, when you get down here, head over to the um, uh, main hall area in the center of town. Okay? Be sharp. All right. Well, uh, let's go. I put on my armor. All right. I as you guys, um, is everyone ready? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you guys leave uh, the Seven Silvers, you find that the Seven Silvers, as you are leaving it, is actually empty. There's nobody inside of it. Uh, as you walk towards the center of the town of Kassin, uh, you hear the uh, bells from the uh, temple um, where Father Prest uh, worships uh, ring out their sound for, their, um, for sounding the noon hour. And as you hear the bells sort of clang and you're in the center of the city, of the town square, uh, you sort of start to see everyone sort of, sort of leak out of the various buildings, <clears throat> out of the woodwork, and enter the town square. Everyone's dressed in black, as if they were attending a funeral, and they slowly all together march, very quietly, eyes downcast and very mournful, and remembering um, the anniversary of the death of their founder, and as they um, sort of 
start to fill up the town uh, square. You see Mayor Updal sort of push himself uh, through the crowd and sort of get onto a small podium in front of the sort of the t main town building. And behind him, he holds a very old pony uh, dragging a cart, uh, which you see is actually stocked with backpacks and supplies. And he holds in his hand a very old and tarnished but ornate silver lantern. And once he finally reaches the center of the crowd, he calls out in a voice that almost seems magically amplified. Once again, winter from the Fangwood Forest comes upon us, marking the end of yet another harvest. There are dangers in the woods, wolves howling at our walls, serpents in the shadow, dangers everywhere waiting to strike. And just as it was nearly 200 years ago, when Cassin himself left these great walls to protect us, so it is today. Where are our heroes? Where are the brave members of our community that will venture out to Cassin's tomb and retrieve the Ever Flame to keep us safe for another winter? At this point, we all step out. Yeah. We all go back to bed. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it's just... <laughs> At this Can point... Can wander through the crowd attempting to obtain currency? At this point, the crowd sort of parts away from you, so you guys, whether you wanted to or not, are sort of left in the center of the crowd. And, no um... Currency. And Mayor Uptall looks at you guys and says, Are you the heroes that our town searches for? We're the heroes your town needs. <laughs> Does it deserve? <laughs> Will you accept our town's mission and return with the Everflame? Aye. Yes. Unless someone will offer me a large quantity of money for it. No, no yes, yes, we'll do it. <laughs> and he walks up to you and he holds the lantern in his hand and says, Who then will have the honor of carrying... Cassin's lantern themselves. I got hey, it. Valor. <laughs> and he sort of looks amongst you guys as if questioning which one of you is the leader of the group. Me. Yeah, me. What? <laughs> Kungar. Oh, please. We're all gonna die if you're the leader. Dude, I, I vote to give it to. Heal, heal Wait, bag, I thought whatever. someone bought a lantern. Like, like, and, and no, no, he's giving us a special lantern. I'll hold it. I'll just give it away. Urbag, sort of. You guys sort of, sort of talk amongst yourselves, and then finally, just Ur, like Urbag goes ahead, sort of shoves uh, Kungar a little bit, and just walks out and grabs the lantern. Wait, he can't shove me. Yes, he can. He yeah, tries he to. Can't shove me. <laughs> he tries. He goes ahead and grabs the lantern. Um, with that, everyone uh, in the town simultaneously claps at the same time and looks down at the ground. And with that, Mayor Uptall himself says, Then it is settled. Over here we have uh, sustenance for you. Five days worth of food and water uh, and other adventuring guides as you adventurers go forth towards the southern tip of the forest of Fangwood, towards the Serpent Hills, to the crypt of the Everflame, to pay tribute to Cassin and ask for his blessings for another winter and another year. And with that, he walks over to the where the pony and the mule and every the horse or whatever and the cart, and he gives you uh, a backpack each, uh, which contains uh, five days worth of rations, a small tent, a winter blanket, a full water skin, and a scrap of paper. Um, so, uh, you guys can write that down again if you wish. Um, what are we writing down? You guys are getting into your inventory a backpack containing five days uh, worth of rations. Small tent, winter blanket, a full water skin, 
and like each of us is getting one of these. Each one of the ones is giving this. As as you grab the backpacks, you also notice that they feel almost as if you're carrying nothing at all. Um, and you sort of uh, and uh, Mayor Uptal himself says these materials have been specially prepared before you by Holgast, our wizard himself. May it keep you safe on your journey. And what paper? Question mark paper? I'm actually going to show you what paper uh, you receive. I'm going to uh, PM you each so the paper. are all these things weightless? Weightless? Yes. Anything uh, in them is weightless. I'm going to go ahead and PM you guys the specific items, uh, the specific paper that you all received. Uh, feel free to share it in the uh, Dungeons and Dragons main chat. Okay? For you, uh, you get that herb bag. No, All right, I have to share it though. It's up to you. All right, uh, for whoa, team speak, please come back. Okay, for you, that. Okay, and then for you that, and finally for you, Mal uh, no, uh, for you, her bag. There we go. There you go. What did you guys get? Um, I got a piece of a map. I also got a piece of a map. Let's put our pieces together. That sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> oh. My mind says something rude about my mother. <laughs> what? Okay, can I have your piece of the map, Nick? John? Kun guy? And you, uh, Nick? Can you yeah, make your pieces of the map? How much is it worth to you? Um, I will not kick you until it hurts. <laughs> Alright, yeah, you can have this. Oh, we... Just, just link it in the main chat. Oh. Great. Is, is there an imager of the map put together? Or are we not smart enough to do that? There is none of any such sort. If you guys wish to, uh, with your actual computers, try to do so. I got uh, this that's voice. up to you. But you guys yeah, have this... Have these map pieces together. Um, uh, snip I mean, I, I already got two. two, so these two go together. One, two, and this goes. All right. While you guys look through your uh, sort of pack, uh, Mayor Uptall once again speaks with sort of this magically amplified voice and says I present to you the brave fellows and heroes who will follow in Kasten's very footsteps themselves and will retrieve the Everflame. Some of them may not return but I say to you that their sacrifice shall not be forgotten. Now go brave heroes and do not return until you have the eternal fire which keeps our fair town safe. And with that the mayor points towards the southern ex exit of the uh, city of the uh, town, uh, towards the direction of Cassin's tomb, and mm -hmm. the town folks sort of part way to sort of leave an alley for you guys to go through, and they sort of solemnly wave goodbye in their black clothes with a very cold and grim look on most of their faces. Yeah. So well. You got So we left, right? Correct? Yeah, you guys are now traveling south. Uh, you guys will need to know roughly where you're going to be going. Um, okay, so... That's up to you guys to try and figure out where you are heading. Alright um, guys. Well, I know where we're going. If you follow this road, we'll be at the Broken Glade. Indeed. 
Well, if we go did, south. Is, did you want to just stop at the Broken Blade, or did you want to? I mean, we'll have to make a right or left from coming from where we are. But I don't okay, know. Okay, so broken I guess we're doing is. that. I mean, let's travel. Let's go to the Serpent Hills. I mean, that's where we're going. <laughs> But... Yeah, let's do it, big. All right. At this point, I, need, I want all of you to roll a perception check. Okay. Oh god, we're gonna die. Oh, where, where's my dice? This one's mine. All right, I got one. Gun, yours is in the pile. Yeah. Somehow. Who got rid of my dice? I got rid of it. I don't see my dice. I got nineteen. Uh, I got three. Was four? I got seven. What was that? I got twenty. All right. With uh, those, uh, with those rolls, uh, you guys, as you leave the town, uh, don't notice anything. You sort of hear the rustle of maybe a bird in the trees, but that's about it. As you head out of the town, and the town sort of fades off into the distance. Uh, you know the trek will be roughly a forty-mile trek. Uh, but with only five days worth of rations, uh, it's important that you guys not get lost along the way. Okay, so we follow this road until the Broken Glade. Until the Broken Glade. And then we make a left towards the Great Something or other. The mm -hmm. Gert, 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 the Gert, Gray, Gray, Gray Lake. <laughs> Try, trying to put that together from the pictures is hard. Sorry. <laughs> and then uh, Nick just disconnected. Yep. Yeah, I'll be back in. I keep going. I can hear. All right. I'm so do, yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing because my sound's fucked up. Okay. So just go ahead and get back in here when you guys can. So as you guys continue to walk, um, you guys uh keep going, 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 and you start to think you might be a little lost. Seeing as on a 40 mile trek, you guys still haven't hit uh, the opening that should be the Broken Glade. Uh, what do you guys decide to do? Keep going. I, just, uh, I mean, did we miss the fucking road? I don't, I don't think, I think someone would have saw it. I said we'd just keep going. Or no, but yeah, we. Uh, it's up to you guys. Uh, can Wait. I attempt to look around for landmarks that are in front of me and on the map to determine my location? You see trees. Okay, guys, so if we see trees, we could be between Cassin and Broken Glade. We could be past Broken Glade. We could be in the woods, and Andrew actually does have a random woods encounter ready for us. Oh, who fucked up all the tiles here? They're fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Good job, Justin. Okay. Uh, I came back and they're all messed up. They're fine Fuck for now. For yep. No, like, 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 are they legitimately messed up on your screen? Or no. Are no. They... no, they're fine. Oh, really? They're perfect yep. on my screen. Yeah, they're yeah. messed up on mine. All right, don't worry about it for now. Okay. Um. I say we just keep following the road. Okay. I, I, I will, I will use. Use valor to me. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> No, actually, use Valor to scout out the area. Yes, that's what you... Can mean. Valor bring me on this scout? Mm. I feel like that's a possible doable thing. <laughs> um... <laughs> what can Valor lift? Let's see, Valor Urbag, do you have a ride? Okay, Urbag, if you wish to actually do so, I want you to roll for ride. No, no, have him carry him by the claws. That way he doesn't fall off and die. <laughs> okay, roll for ride. Uh, I mean, or or I feel like Valor should. That's twenty sided die, right? Yep. Yeah. Everything rolling is generally twenty sided. John's gonna die too. You died, John. Four. Four. <laughs> uh, you get on Valor's back, and as Valor lifts up into the air, you promptly fall on your ass. Okay. Can, can uh, we off have of Valor? Valor, grab John or D bag with Valor's claws and carry him by his shoulders in the air. Assuming Valor can lift his weight, which since we can do a red check, I'm assuming he can. Do you wish is, to do that? Is it a strength check for the bird? 
I mean, no, it's can he physically lift your weight? And yeah. if he can, it's fine. Wouldn't that, like, that wouldn't be a strength check? No, Valor should Lift be able to do this. It's one of the strength things. Yep. So. Um, do you wish to do this? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm down with it. Yeah. We're, we're still All right, still Valor, uh, roll, roll for Valor on fly. I don't know. No, I'm going to pour myself a couple mini weights. Still on the mic. 15. 15 plus... 5. 4. Plus wait. four. Valor's oh, fly. Oh, wait, oh, whoops, 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 whoops. Wrong sheet. Wrong sheet, yeah, it's five. Okay. Uh, success uh, with that. Urbag uh, feels Talon sort of grip very strongly at his shoulder blades. Actually, a little too strongly, but his hide uh, armor sort of gets three, uh, four new pocket marks on each shoulder. And uh, he suddenly goes up into the air, and sort of Valor sort of struggles getting up in the air, but is able to do so. And they sort of circle above the treetops before uh, returning down. Uh, Urbag, you see off in the faint distance, uh, heading off in the faint distance. You just are barely able to make out a small opening in the trees. Ah, oh, lovely. Um, yeah, we'll go to that. Is there any way I know which way I'm looking? You know which way you're looking. Nobody else knows what you saw. Oh, okay. So All right, great. I, so. I call Valor down. Yeah. And uh, I say, uh, "Er, back. What do you see up there?" What did you see up there? I saw a nice little clearing a uh, little ways up. So we're getting there. It's just farther than we thought. Maybe the maps aren't as accurate as we had hoped. So I say we, we continue going in the direction with which we were previously yeah, heading. Is that the correct direction, though? Hmm? I mean, as long as you yeah, want to okay. Uh, okay, so you guys decide to keep going where you're going? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, All right. The, the is in the same direction as the thing you saw? Correct. Okay, so we'll keep going on the route. So as you guys continue... Yeah, it's sounding robotic for me too. It's everyone, everyone. It's everyone? Their team speak is shooting right now. Okay, I, I didn't know if that was just me. No, it's me too. I hear everyone the same way. Does it sound okay yet? Um, yeah. Give it a minute, see if it goes away. Okay, yeah, it's, it went away, right? Yep. Okay, as you guys continue on your path, it's another two hours before you sort of enter a clearing, um, which uh, the tree line starts to sort of thin out. However, uh, as the narrow pa path sort of winds down and you start to sort of see in the vague distance this opening in the clearing trees, um, as you go down this narrow pathway with um, all the trees around you sort of bare of their leaves as winter is coming, uh, you see up ahead of you a fallen tree trunk. All right. Uh, suddenly, you see three orcs leap out from behind the log. They are one of them has a ring of human heads actually strapped around his uh, right side of his waist. Uh, they're all green and they have uh, fearsome sort of giant pronounced tusks and you hear them sort of yelling out to you guys come out and play get out of here come on How don't run from them are we well can you place them on the board we will be seeing hold on i mean ta -da. am i able to figure that out on my own or oh god what is this so what were our pawns again? We were red, purple, pink, green, and then white. All right, you guys are over here on this side. Over here we have our log that's fallen over, and over here on the flanking you are um thick, <laughs> thick, uh, thick brush and trees. If you want to cross past the thick brush and trees, it will take. M 
more than two turns to do so. Uh, there's lots of thorns and whatnot. This log over here, uh, your movement is reduced by times three when going over it. All right, and over here we have sort of a sort of a artificial blockade that has been set up. All right. Uh, RPG kit. Where are our orc friends? Hold on, I'm setting it up. Let me go ahead and get my notes out. Guys, combat day one. Let's go. <laughs> Is that Andrew doing? Hold on. Let me just make sure I got this right. One, two, three. So we have. Uh, these uh, thick brushes and trees are also large enough that you can't really tell what's behind them as well. Okay, so we just see the three orcs in front of us? Correct. Okay. Uh, you guys can go ahead and arrange yourself behind this line in any way you wish your party to be organized. Okay. I want to be, on the squares. I, I wanna be in the front so I can shoot at them with my crossbow somehow. Uh, so I got it, the shield. Should I be in the front? So, yeah, you should be in a position to step up, but not in my way. Alright, And I'll if get Justin behind. has a ranged weapon, same thing. I mean, I do. I'm right yeah, between what, you guys. What spell did you prepare for us today, John? <laughs> are, are, are you healing us, or are you doing the deeps? John's hiding. I'm healing. Actually, I'm just really far back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I should be really far back. I mean, whatever. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll get... I'll get one back like that. Does Valor have his have her own square? Uh, Valor, yes, has her own square wherever she wishes to be. Okay. Alright, okay. right, I think we're ready. Alright, uh, one second. Let me make sure I'm ready for you guys. <laughs> Alright, um, so, uh, Go ahead and uh, roll for initiative, everyone. That's a d20. I will dice. do this. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Okay. Uh, uh, what dice do your weapons need, by the way? Uh, 10, 6, 4 for me. Okay, so dice. Three, four. One, two, three. Let me just spawn everything. Uh, yeah, I need a d10 and a d8. Everyone, everyone grab one of each. Ay, ay, ay. I don't know what the difference between them are. Colors, Scrap different colors. And you should have six. I believe there should be six die, and then Andrew like spawning all the different color die for no reason. Maybe we don't need the different color d6s. Let's see, you need one of these. Oh, oh Justin needs a d4. Where's that? That one? Oh. Uh, six. Does everyone have six? I have four. Okay, you need a d4. You need a d6. So we need another d4, Andrew. Okay. I got a d6. Okay. How the hell does this thing work? Uh, so if you roll, you see the bottom number is the same on all sides? Yeah. The one sticking up, so that's what you rolled. Wait, the bot, huh? So, so the three, you see how on every side, the number that you can read, like, yeah. is three? So okay. you wrote a three, so then, I wrote, oh, I wrote a three. Whatever's, wrote, whatever's up? And whatever's the same on the bottom so one. So that's, that's a three, oh, that's a two, that's a three again, that's a three again. Uh, that one likes threes. It's lucky three. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Alright, um... 
Okay, um, here's what I... Yes, please roll for initiative and let me know what you roll in just a second, not right right now. Uh... Oh. You know, I don't know what if it means that? anything, but I speak orc. So before you guys, like, try to murder them... I mean, I don't want to talk to them. Oh, yeah, do they have human skulls on their belt? I don't know, maybe we but can- But not our them. skulls! Yeah! <laughs> but they're orcs, their intelligence is gonna be quite low. Yeah, go talk. Okay, now hold they on. Know that One, two... Um, what, is there an initiative bonus somewhere on my sheet? Okay, yeah. Right yes. There. Okay, I see it now. Alright, um... So, um, please tell me your initiative rolls. Oh, uh, with total? Or yes, total. With with the bonus, 21. Yes. So, that was, um... What is the initial? That was oh, Glocken. Okay. Uh, it's underneath HP. Okay. And to the right of Charisma. Uh, I got 14. Oh, okay. Okay. I got 10. 14. Okay. I got 8. Who got 8? Ungar. Okay. And then, uh, shoot, where is my character sheet for you? Here, Urbag got 10, right? Mm hmm. Alright, um, Glocken, you get to go first. Um, I draw my crossbow. I don't know what I can do in one turn. So, on one turn, you get three main things you have a main action, right? Which is anything combat oriented, basically. Mm -hmm. It's anything that would take a while to do, right? Like a f drawing is not right. It's one. It's a smaller one, right? Drawing right. Dr well, drawing. Yes, like unsheathing a weapon or something like that. That's a minor action. A minor action is anything that can be done in like one second, for example, right? Okay. Then you have a move action, and you have like a major action, or mm -hmm. uh, basically your standard action. So your standard action is basically yes. your, like, where you do anything. I want to, like, try and bust open a door. I want to try and attack, all right? I want to cast a spell, all right? Move action is pretty much what it sounds like. It's where you move or it's where you stand up or something like that. And then the free action is basically the little things. I want to, like, you know, yell something or I want to, you know, unsheath something. Mm. So, I, I want to draw my crossbow. Okay, you equip your crossbow. That's your free action. Does my crossbow have a bolt in it or no? Uh, yes, your crossbow, since it's a crossbow, has a bolt loaded in. Yeah, it's on, it's loaded. I don't yep. need to re- okay. Um, I shoot at one of the orcs. What's your range? Pick one. He is, uh, he's got 120 feet, or... Okay. Or 120, yeah. Uh, so yep. that divided by yeah, five. Eight, eight, eight times five. Mm -hmm. So it's forty. It's forty feet away. Right, each tile is five. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it, it it's forty feet away. Okay, so okay. you go ahead and shoot at the orc with your oh, heavy oh, crossbow. Right, so yes, please roll your. Uh, yep, d twenty. Seventeen. And then what do I add to that? Dexterity, right? Because it's a ranged attack. Uh, yes, yes. So twenty-one. Twenty-one. All right. So the orc with a twenty-one. Where is my AC? Okay. Uh, rolled on which orc number is that? That's orc number. That one. Okay. Uh, hit. Roll for damage. Uh, D10s are the green ones, right? Yes. You can Nine roll... Nine plus two. That's so, an 11. Okay, that's an 11 total? Yes. Alright. So, that's on number... Three, so this is that. The orc takes a direct hit staggers back words 
and is completely and absolutely bloodied. However, after falling over, you notice something strange. It gets back up once again and roars a mighty roar like it just had the most annoying thing happen to it ever. Oh god, guys, they got hacks. Alright. Uh, turn to this guy gets to go. So... One second. The orc hops up onto here and chucks a spear over at Glocken over here in Can the I pink. Block? You unfortunately cannot. Glocken, uh, go ahead and um, roll. Uh, uh, not, I'm sorry, not. Uh, actually, yes. Roll for a reflex uh, save. Uh, is that six? Plus reflex is six or twelve. Unfortunately, you are not able to dodge the spear in time, and it comes hurling straight towards you. What is your armor class, please? Oh, uh, AC is 17. That does not stop the spear, unfortunately. You will take... One, two, six, plus three. Bam! Oh, dear. <laughs> you take nine damage. Solid. How many hit points do you have? Oh, my God. At this oh point... God. At this point... Oh how do I only have 11? I have 17 constitution. Because you're, um... Yeah, because you have a... Uh, your uh, hit dice uh, were a, was a d8. Yep. You take 9 damage. Um, okay, at this point, I want everybody here to roll for... Uh, to roll a willpower save. What do I roll? Yeah. D20? Yep, D20. Oops, I dropped it. Whatever, that works. And tell me what your so that's will save plus whatever you roll. Plus I, I got I got a twenty two. I got thirteen. Takes thirteen. Malgrenor is eight twenty two. Okay. Yeah. Kungar. Ten with a willpower. What the fuck is willpower save? It's under saving throws. Fortitude reflex will. Uh, yeah. No, I got a I got a nine. I got a minus one. <laughs> and Urbag. Oh, I'm sorry. What am I rolling? I my mom called. D twenty. Yep. D twenty. Okay. Plus your willpower status. Oh, natural twenty. Natural twenty. Natural yeah. twenty. Oh. Okay. Yeah. No, this is natural twenty. Oh. All right, Glocken. Uh, you take yeah. the spear to the chest, and it hurts a lot. Like. A whole lot. Like, you did not realize that this is what combat was. You take the full nine points of damage. Um, meanwhile, uh, Kungar is sort of just over there off on the side, picking his nose, just watching what's happening over here. Malgrenor, though, you've studied under the great Olmira tree song, though. You know that things that look alive may be alive. Alive. But they also may not be. You sense no life coming from these orcs whatsoever. They, these don't give any aura of life. You don't really... They, they're not connected in any way, be it evil or good, with the world around you. You simply don't sense anything whatsoever coming from them. Um, meanwhile, uh, Urbag. Yeah? You, uh... You... You also, with a natural 20, see these creatures in front of you, and you sense no Holy Spirit whatsoever, nothing from your gods, indicating that there's even anything in front of you whatsoever. You, you look across from you, and there is nothing on your horizon. Um, at this point, I also want uh, only Urbag and Malgrenor to make another perception check. Four plus natural plus. twenty. John cheats. John got a natural. Wait, really? Did you really? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> wow, I didn't even. I was already on my character sheet when I rolled it. Damn. What did you roll, Justin? Uh, I'm sorry. What did you roll, Magranor? 
Four plus seven? Four plus seven. Uh, so that would be eleven. All right, you don't notice anything more, uh, Malgrinor. However, uh, Urbag, you smell a very familiar smell. You smell some pretty dank kush in the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hella dank. All right. <laughs> With that, okay, so that's orc. Uh, that's the orc's turn. Next up is actually, um, out of nowhere, another orc appears. He jumps out from over here. 